Welcome for those that have just joined. See that we've got quite a couple of participants that have joined. Welcome. Uh, we're pleased to go through this Unify presentation with you guys and just discuss a bit of uh, the new technology with the Unify access points, um, how they are configured, and then, of course, the ease of management and monitoring on the actual SDN controller as well. So before we start, for those of you that didn't hear me earlier, I am joined by Dean, one of our senior technical advisors here at Miro, and he assists the, te the technical team with regards to any RMA requirements, or testing on the products, um, and so on and so forth. We'll be doing a live demonstration a little bit later. So Dean, welcome. And um, yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's do a mirror introduction first. All right, let's start. Um, right there, you can see for the past 18 years, since Miro was founded in South Africa in 2003, we've been quite busy and have, have applied our industry knowledge that led to the companies building up a formidable proven track record of supplying powerful, flexible, and scalable solutions. Miro has positioned itself as a responsible um, supplier to the growing IP convergence and joined the JSE listed company, Udeco, as a result. As a proud PE level four contributor, uh, we also sell and export to 35 different countries uh, around the world. And with over 170 staff members based throughout our four South African branches, those branches of course being Cape Town, Durban, Nelspruit, and Centurion, we are also proud to say that we've got a branch in Kenya. With over two and a half thousand items in our catalog, we uh, managed to ship 95% of orders the same day. So as a distributor that keeps stock on hand, we move a new product every 12 seconds. And as you can see at that bottom uh, statistic there, in 2020, we far exceeded the 640,000 uh, items sold in 2019. So let's have a look at why Mirror, and with all the, the additional added value benefits you can enjoy as a business, uh, a business partner when you sign up with us. TaylorMade solutions. Um, TaylorMade solutions are made available to our partners. Um, and this is, of course, you can do this as a once-off application, or if you need some assistance to do a full network solution. Our team is constantly updating their knowledge uh, to ensure that we stay relevant with the markets and even, dare I say, set some examples. The complete solution uh, to be among South Africa's leading distributors of wireless, networking, VoIP, and IP video uh, products means that we only have the best of breed products, ensuring we find a complete solution for you. The benefits of having a vast product portfolio uh, means that we have got products to assist you in Wi-Fi and broadband solutions, such as indoor and outdoor access points. Uh, you'll soon hear about the Wi-Fi 6 units that we've got available, all the way through to mobile and LTE with, pro uh, with products such as MiFi and Wi-Fi 6 routers. With infrastructure, we have a big portfolio, uh, which includes things like masts, brackets, cabinets, and even outdoor safe to protect your hardware from theft and severe weather. From our VoIP portfolio, we have brands uh, that showcase phenomenal conference attributes, which we will introduce you after this presentation, um, like Grandstream, um, all the way through to enterprise solutions uh, to supplying a full unified communication layout. Our security portfolio also consists of indoor and outdoor surveillance hardware with additions such as facial recognition and our latest access control equipment. With fiber, we have all that is required for a fiber network infrastructure, including OLTs, ONUs, except fiber cable. We also cater for IoT requirements such as gateways, um, which can work with your existing networking solution all the way through to 3G fleet management routers. On the support uh, side of things, you can see that uh, service and support is our main focus and our 
highly trained technical staff like Dean sitting here can assist you with your full solutions planning and will work in conjunction with your dedicated sales engineer that is of course assigned to your account. We have an RMA department to ensure any faulty or problematic hardware units are sorted as soon as possible. Mira has also launched a new service offering, on-site assistance, but given the current state of affairs, um, these service will resume as soon as we are in the care with COVID-19. Um, hopefully there'll be some dates available to us soon. You are, however, welcome to send us an email to support at miro.co.za if you require more information on this service. On the legal compliance side of things, Miro as a stock holding distributor is a proud market leader with type approval for our products. This ensures a steady supply of legal equipment in accordance to ICASA's uh, regulations. But financing, Miro offers two finance options in partnership with IPFIN. Um, and with the run rate account, Miro offers a seven or 30 day account, but you're also welcome to apply for a hardware finance option, whereby you can either do the finance for your own account or pass it on to your client. Uh, you can get in contact with any of our sales engineers um, and they'll be able to assist you in applying. Um, it's really quick and easy online application. Let's talk about training, introducing our very own Miro Academy. Uh, this platform is available to all of our business partners where you can enjoy the convenience of training online from certified training courses and all of our products all the way through to introductory courses, uh, introducing you to various aspects and applications to the telecommunication industry. If you uh, connect by training at miro.co.za, they'll be able to assist you in finding the perfect training course for you and or your company. Our training calendar is also available on www.miro.co.za. That is it for the mirror side of things. On the ubiquity access point um, is what we are here to, to learn more about. Um, ubiquity truly has become a leader in management Wi-Fi um, with its end-to-end -end Unify systems. So, of course, these access points with Unify's unbeatable, unbeatable value, performance and scalability, and of course, it's enhanced by this free management platform that we'll be able to have a look into a little bit deeper as we go on with this presentation. Um, and let's be honest, it's a world-renowned brand, and hopefully will continue to generate that excitement for many more years. So let's start with the different applications that we can have a look at and where these access points uh, will live. Unify Wi-Fi system, as you can see there by home, is a scalable platform with an incredible price point. Unify's access points uh, solution is designed, of course, to be easily deployed and managed from either your Unify app. Now this Unify app on your phone um, is available on iOS and of course the Apple Store, or alternatively, the SDN platform, which we'll talk about a little bit later on that live show. However, using the Unify controller software, um, it really can be quickly configured and administered without real special training required. This is especially attractive to homeowners where security and control is, um, yeah, the ultimate luxury. Another application where Unify lives is the office space. So Ubiquiti's portfolio, um, many of you that have, may have listened to me before, I call it the perfect business partner. And this consists of cloud-hosted services, enterprise technologies. Again, it's a cost disruptive prices. Um, it now features dual band indoor and outdoor access points with high throughput switches and even powerful security gateways. Um, the switches and the gateways will follow as well on our next webinar, but more information on that a little bit later. On the commercial and public side, um, something that has become an implicit expectation, as I've mentioned so many times, um, for any commercial and public property is the service of Wi-Fi. 
Uh, let's be honest, the first thing you do when you look for a hotel or something to that extent is you see whether these people actually host Wi-Fi. Um, and if you actually think about how many people go to public spaces or even their own uh, office criteria, uh, cafeteria, to have meetings and, and do work while having breakfast or sipping coffee, the Cape Tonians know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, doing your morning's work has become the norm for many. Uh, businesses will soon be operational fully um, post COVID. And whether you operate it from home or office, Unify will definitely have a solution for you. Right. Something that has been on everybody's lips lately, especially with all of the new technology that we've now come across, is the internet addiction. Um, make no mistake about it, internet addiction is a real thing, and it could potentially affect millions of people around the world. Um, in fact, according to recent studies, it is currently thought that internet addiction is even more common than alcoholism. Um, and I think it's due to the fact that you can be a 10 year old these days and, and be addicted to uh, the internet. A recent report also compiled by the iconic displays found, in, uh, found that 67% of people interviewed couldn't go without Wi-Fi internet access for more than a day. Quite scary. A further 80% of those interviewed said that a week with no Wi-Fi would make them even grumpier than a week with no coffee. Right, now for the parents out there, I'm sure you can relate. A child in the home without Wi-Fi, um, this is me speaking, not having kids, but a child in the home um, without Wi-Fi, I'm sure it's like skydiving without a, or rather with the shared uh, parachute. But Wi-Fi internet access um, that is now available pretty much anywhere these days, it is no wonder that people have become so dependent on this tool. So if you have a look on the left-hand side with Ubiquiti's AC lights and the AC pros, these are good examples of architecture that can be deployed in a home. And um, many of us have now started offices in our homes as well. So it's a perfect deployment with attributes such as um, band steering, 802.11 AC, uh, 3x3 MIMO, um, dual band access points on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, and indoor and outdoor, um, it delivers a promise of a proper connected household. We'll talk about the connected household and everything that is part of it a little bit later. The Ubiquiti AC Pro um, will deliver over a gigabit throughput on the five gigahertz spectrum, which is perfect for deployment when you've got multiple smart devices. As I've mentioned earlier, if you think about TVs and laptops and everything else that is connected in a home. Now, if you pay for a five or a 10, or even a 20 meg line with bad Wi-Fi, it really kind of defeats the purpose. So Unify is really the perfect home solution where control is more focused on um, web security and access. Um, parents, as I've mentioned earlier, you want to put restrictions in place for when your kids can and can't access the Wi-Fi. You can, for instance, set up a uh, separate SSID and apply a scheduled access policy to it while the grown-ups get a different SSID. Um, yeah. All of that a little bit later as we go into the live demo, but uh, yeah, know that that exists. And then on the right-hand side, I am proud to announce our first Wi-Fi 6 access points now available at Miro. There are two variants. The one is the light, the other one is the long range. For the home application, I picked the light unit. And as you can see, it's still a quite, quite a little strong, um, very much the same architecture as all the other access points, um, dual band with a radio rate of 1.2 gigabits per second. Um, technology within the Wi-Fi 6 um, like the MU MIMO and OFDMA. I'll explain a little bit um, later on Wi-Fi 6 what that exactly is. Um, the nice thing about it as well is that it is compatible with the UAP Nano HDs covers. Now, some of you that know the Nano HDs will know that there are 
um, covers that are black and and more um, what do you call those army style covers um, yeah and it's a high efficiency Wi-Fi 6 um, 2i2 ME MIMO unit So let's have a look at um, these access points and, and why we would choose these. Um, like I've mentioned earlier, these are dual band access points, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz with MIMO technology. Um, you can now build scalable networks. And the best part of it all is it's managed through the SDN platform, a free management tool um, that we will expand on a little bit later. But as I've said earlier, the light is a perfect for home and small offices um, where throughput and connectivity is a criteria. Um, the Pro is perfect for medium offices or large homes with a similar criteria. And then, as I said, the MIMO bands um, with high throughput on those Wi-Fi 6 access points. Okay. But let's just take a step back to understand the Wi-Fi 6. Um, slide that we showed the, the access points. Sorry, Dean, can you just go back one? So the MU MIMO was first introduced um, as part of the Wi-Fi 5 technology, but in Wi-Fi 6, it is bigger and better. That can now transmit up to eight data streams at once. We had a webinar um, on Wi-Fi 6 not so long ago. You are welcome to go to the Mirror Academy to have um, a quick update there. That presentation is loaded. Um, but just for those of you that have missed it, I made the analogy of saying that imagine yourself and, a seven, and seven other cars on a highway and you have eight different places to go, but only a one way leading to these destinations. So if you think about the N1 at seven o'clock in the morning, it's congested. But with the MU MIMO feature, it's like eight additional highways have just become available for you to reach your endpoint. Okay. Now this of course leads to less congestion, which in turn creates better performance. This is why this technology in partnership with OFDMA is such a perfect um, application. If you think about things like streaming media and high capacity links uh, that you would require for things like downloading um, documents. Um, because let's be honest, people are working from home these days. So if, whether you are forced to work at home or whether you are an entrepreneur that have started your own company post or pre COVID, you can imagine the needs for proper download and upload speeds. You can all download work documents, but you also need to upload things like media, for instance. So not to mention all the streaming done um, in the name, of course, of online meetings. Thanks, Dean. Let's have a look at what business has for us. Now, to understand good business practice uh, when deploying enterprise Wi-Fi solutions in a company, is to understand the industry's challenges. And one of the biggest challenges is, of course, staying connected. Connections need to be sustainable wherever you go in the office, whether you're on a, a smart device like your cell phone or in the office or walking around on a Skype call, um, connectivity is, is a real challenge. Network security and control is also very important. It's quite imperative in actual fact. Network administrators are not always able to control a network from one management platform. And normally these platforms come with expensive license fees. So you're looking for flexibility after deployment um, with Unify, which you can do. Um, but also in the past, I think it was also a bit of a, a costly exercise if you were to add more access points, for instance, to an already set up network. With Ubiquiti, however, that can assist in the application where, as I've mentioned before, dual band antennas are required. Um, you can now add that to your network. If you combine that with things like high throughput switches and powerful security gateways, um, you'll, you'll have a pretty powerful network applied. 
Um, as I've mentioned earlier, the switches and the gateways, we are going to talk about in the next webinar as well. Now, surely this uh, network application should also be able to grow and adapt as the business grows and adapts. The unique features of each unified device provides you with the freedom to deliver the ideal solution for your application. Um, for example, Unify delivers on the core needs of enterprise Wi-Fi, allowing users to seamlessly roam between access points that are easily managed by administrators from a single interface, whether you on-site or whether you off-site, um, making Unify, of course, the ideal solution for whether you're a small, medium, or large office. Okay, I've mentioned before that in addition to this, the Unify SDN platform um, is a free management platform, and it also caters for multi-branch organizations with its software-defined wide area network architecture, or SD-WAN. This architecture connects um, various branches to a central network and allow administrators to seamlessly control and adjust all branches, um, all, all branches network and security functions from a single uh, location. Okay, the units that I've chosen here on the slide is the Nano HDs, just purely based on the fact that it's a dual band access point. You can see there that 1.7 um, gigabits per second, you can use it and power it through the switch um, and it can connect up to 200 concurrent users. Um, as a reminder, the previous slide, that's what the Nano HD looks like, obviously with its normal white color. Now you can use that same color, it's the same size as the Unify Wi-Fi 6 Lite. On the right hand side, you'll see that I've added the Wi-Fi 6 long range unit. It is in direct, um, or a, a direct, what do you call it, um, example that you can add uh, if you don't have ACLRs. Um, I think, personally speaking, I think we'll soon be seeing more Wi-Fi 6 long ranges than the actual ACs due to the fact that you've got four stream high efficiencies. Um, it's a dual band radio with 4x4 MU MIMO and OFDMA. Um, and it's just an overall stronger unit in, you know, if once applied to your network, I can see you future proving whatever else is coming. Okay, that's business side of things. Um, but why these access points? So if you, like I said earlier with the, the Nano HDs and the Wi-Fi 6 units, it's perfect for high density deployments. If you think about the throughput uh, and the concurrent users that you are able to get, there's various ways of installation on many of these uh, units, specifically on the Flex, which we'll touch base on in a moment as well. Um, various ways of installation. Uh, the Nano, of course, is perfect for smaller offices. You've got the throughput on the Nano and the form factor is nice and sleek. Um, you can manage these access points off of the SDN controller or your Unify app. You truly do have enterprise technology. Um, and as I've said, you even have dual band indoor and outdoor access points at a very competitive cost disruptive price. Speaking of the flex, as I've mentioned earlier, um, this unit is great if you have a commercial or public service and you need a little bit of a mesh wireless network. Now the benefit of mesh wireless networks, it gives you the advantage of multiple access points without needing to run um, a cable everywhere or anywhere. But why not just add an extender is the question I can hear. Mesh systems typically work better than a standalone all-in-one router with an added wireless repeater. And there's a lot of reasons for that. A typical wireless repeater essentially reduces your throughput to half. Scalable enterprise Wi-Fi management um, on the Unify side of things is revolutionary, uh, or is rather a revolutionary Wi-Fi system. And you can combine that with enterprise performance, unlimited scalability, and of course, Again, the best part is you can control it from a free centralized management controller. 
On the left-hand side, as I've mentioned earlier, the Unify Flex access point is an HD access point. It has a small, sleek design and compact form factor that can easily be deployed indoors or outdoors. Now, please note, this actual unit's got a POE port at the bottom. So if you mount these, don't mount it upside down. Um, we've had one or two instances like that. So I feel compelled to just mention that. Um, it does, however, come with flexible mounting options that can be deployed on tabletops. It has like little rubber feet at the end of it as well, all inclusive when you buy these units. Um, walls, poles, uh, the brackets for the walls and poles are actually one and the same. And then, of course, you can add it to a ceiling. Um, now, I don't know if you've seen the application on a, a Flex HD. It literally fits into, well, not fits into, but it's a similar size like a downlighter in your ceiling. And then it protrudes about five centimeters downwards if you were to deploy that into a ceiling. Um, yeah, the Flex is truly perfect for uh, a high density client deployment um, where of course you need low latency and high uptime performance so perfect for um, high density office type of environment where you need to create a mesh um, and yeah like i said earlier there's even some outdoor applications for it as well the unify ac mesh access points um, on the right hand side They've got a refined industrial design and can be installed using the included mounting hardware. That's great. This hardware comes with the actual units. The ACM and then the ACM Pro, or the AC Pro rather, um, version is the perfect mesh technology for, let's say, warehouses um, or outside offices. More benefits of the Unify's wireless uplink to expand networks even further include technology um, that includes no set path back to the main point. Unify utilizes the method to increase Wi-Fi coverage in both consumer and commercial setups. So, yeah, the, the pro for meshes, you don't need to pull as much cable. Uh, you can get more coverage because of a second or a um, a third ring of devices that can be beyond uh, Ethernet lengths. Yeah, something to consider. Benefits of surveillance in mesh. Um, yeah, you can, wireless cameras can be wirelessly uplinked to the mesh system. Um, you can pull those cameras into the same controller, which you can access, monitor, and manage. Um, we do have cloud services as well, where you can deploy a cloud key. Um, all about that a little bit later and also more information on our next webinar. But essentially, wired cameras can be wired to the mesh equipment as well. And it can be managed and monitored pretty much on the same way um, for any devices that is part of your mesh system. Okay. Now, this is where the fun part starts we are going to get into a little bit of a, a hands-on approach um so dean is sitting opposite me waiting in anticipation dean i think you can open your demo account for us so long if you dare so guys um this is an open forum discussion um we are going to touch base on a couple of um the, the points when setting up access points so the things that we want to be discussing um, is things like the benefits for ISPs um, and central management. And yeah, I think that's a good point to start. And then also the benefits for end users. And then of course the control of ease there as well. So while Dean sets that up, um, you will see on the participants list at the bottom, there's a little uh, chat box so you are welcome as dean presents to post your questions there uh, we will only be answering these questions at the end just to ensure that we've got a little bit of a a better flow um, but please feel free if you see anything or if you've got any questions i'm viewing it from my side while dean is going to start um, on his side and i'll post those questions as soon as we have some time 
Dean, would you quickly just like to say hello and introduce yourself, um, obviously as the best. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's, let's start there with the benefits of ISPs and remote management. Welcome, Dean. Uh, thanks for the good and warm welcome introduction. Um, yeah, I've worked in the technical team for quite a while now, uh, quite a staple in the technical team. And yeah, let's get right into it. So the benefits of remote management and for ISPs, for instance, uh, having multiple sites all over the country, uh, multiple, let's say hundreds of devices in the field, ready to go servicing all your clients and all their needs uh, in the internet basis. Um, so as you can see, uh, just in the demo itself, um, hundreds of APs uh, running through this network itself. Um, also running a couple switches plus the actual uh, security gateway, which is quite fully fleshed out, easy to use and quite powerful as, as it states uh, in, in that section itself. Um, yeah, Dean, thank you. I just quickly wanted to mention before we go ahead that this, um, this is a demo account. It is available on demo.ui.com. If you guys want to play around on that a little bit, it's got most of the access points, uh, switches, gateways, etc. Um, it should have more, uh, most rather of the portfolio. Um, yeah, so please feel free to, to venture into that and, and see. And of course, you're welcome to connect with me afterwards uh, if there are any other questions uh, post this webinar. But Nadine, we've spoken about the benefits for ISPs and the central management and how it can be beneficial for um, them to deploy Unify. But what about the end user? You've mentioned control and ease before. What, how does the end user fit into all of this? So m much like the ISPs and that, um, I mean, you don't always need that uh, high end, everything running, but just more of a local home user family type style um, this is also very demonstrated here yeah, see you only have a couple a couple of APs in your home for instance and you can set up quite a lot of restrictions like I mentioned before in the thing um, about restricting your your kids for instance for certain times of the day um, very easy to use once you set up the controller the first time you barely have to go back to it unless you really want to change something very small uh, but it's very easy to use in, in that uh, regard itself. Uh, yeah, so it's basically, I mean, as I've mentioned earlier, it's it's not difficult to set something up. You don't necessarily need special training on it. Um, it's quite easy. But now, Dean, as we've set up these access points, uh, I mentioned and I spoke about a couple of dual band access points. And then we also mentioned the Wi-Fi 6 units. Now, people have asked me before, what happens if your device is not Wi-Fi 6, um, but you've got a Wi-Fi 6 access point? How, what is the connection there? So, um, we're with dual band and band steering and the Wi-Fi 6 uh, question, as Alma asked. Um, dual band will definitely just help, generally, in most cases, um, people are sitting with legacy devices with their 2.4 um, device iPads, laptops, generally your 2.4 TVs, for instance. Um, only the newer generation is more or less sitting on the 5 gigahertz for that uh, nice high throughput that you see. Um, then on the, the case of the Wi-Fi 6 um, technology, if your device isn't Wi-Fi 6 enabled or it's coming in a new update or however they're working it into their systems, uh, these devices will revert you to a Wi-Fi 5 standard and still keep your connection running. So it's no proprietary knowledge or anything like that. You are able to use it as you would need it um, or when you scale up, for instance. Yeah, that's a good point, uh, Dean. So as the, the Unify Wi-Fi 6 units that we had a look at earlier with regards to the light and the long range, um, those units do have 5 gigahertz um, that obviously that unit will just steer your devices to. So, yeah, then um, Dean, so the flexibility and, and managing connected clients um, mm. based on the profiles that you set up. So we spoke about earlier that we can generate these different profiles, um, but obviously we would need a certain amount of 
flexibility to change our perimeters that have been set. Um, yeah, so can you give us a bit of a, an example? Um, let's say, for instance, in a, in a home environment and or a medium business environment. Um, even if I think about things like a guest house or public spaces, um, you would have to obviously set up a network for things like um, a guest portal. Um, you would have to set up things like for staff, for instance. Um, I'm assuming that they would have a different SSID that you would have perimeters set on that um yeah what 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 are the benefits of those and um how do you work it on the controller um so for um like i said with the guest networks and and etc um yeah so with with the devices and being multi mimo devices with four by four capabilities you're able to run quite a few ssids in conjunction with say your basic uh, SSID. So if you're in a home situation or even in a business situation, you can have multiple SSIDs servicing different departments or different sections of your business or home life, for instance. Um, one running your just your day-to-day, -day, one for your kids, for instance, or one for your guests uh, running from there. So you'll apply your guest policies here. Uh, set any sort of extra parameters that you would like. Um, generally not needed unless you uh, really want to dive deep into those sort of uh, details. And this is where you would set up your guest portal. So it has a fully fledged web UI that it will show you once you log in. And this is quite customizable. You can put your own logo in there, background, even T's and C's if you'd like. And then to the actual authentication types, you can do no, no authentication where it just allows you in, but it first pushes you to that portal. A simple password, a hotspot, uh, which I think most people will go for, where it first requires you to go through there. Um, you can also go through Facebook Wi-Fi. Um, this unfortunately would need a Facebook developer account so that you can actually uh, get into the back end of Facebook to utilize it correctly. And then obviously if you create your own website, you can forward it directly to there so that if you have your own website that it needs to go through, uh, say a radio server or something built in, you can pass it through to there as well. Sure, uh, interesting. So you were talking about setting up different different networks. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about separating or the, or the benefits rather on, on separating and, and securing different networks? So obviously, um, I'm sure most people have noticed um, if you're working with other people or even in a home network, someone is either downloading, streaming, watching a webinar, watching a full conference, and that might be pulling down your network or um, just making your experience unpleasant in that section. So with the USG, you can create multiple networks, uh, VLANs to separate these networks. And what this achieves is you get a lot more stable, uh, the, the, stable well, the network gets stable. Your actual reporting and troubleshooting for these networks becomes a lot easier. So if, say, your say your LAN network goes down, you know exactly where your issue is. Um, from that as well, when you're actually looking at the reporting and what people are currently doing, all your clients, how much they're currently downloading. So this will change from site to site, obviously. But when you're section, sectioning out those networks, um, you have a lot more control and feasibility to where the issue might be if it ever arises, for instance. Thanks, Dean. While we are on um, networks, we've seen an influx on um, in pre-sales planning with regards to people setting up um, hotspots. Um, what are the benefits of communal networks in, in a hotspot environment? So in, in a hotspot environment, it obviously helps out your clients, gives them a great experience on how the hotspot works, uh, makes them feel at home in your premise or yet your home, for instance, um, that they have something to do in their downtime, either waiting for the meeting or going across in that sort of uh, term in that section. Um, 
it's a very nice feature. Not many of these added as a standard, uh, the actual access points. And like, like you've seen, it's nice, fully fledged out. There's not a lot of back-end HTML coding or anything like that. It's all built in and ready to go for your enjoyment. Uh, Okay, that's perfect. Um, Dean, so earlier we were discussing, um, obviously setting up different networks and you mentioned, um, you know, creating things like your own website and it refers back to the website, for instance, if you have a guest portal. Where are we with services and marketing type of opportunities? So you've got a guest portal, you've got a little bit of marketing to do, you want people to like your Facebook. Um, I think it also ties back in the whole scenario where clients are after data. Um, I know you and I had a bit of a conversation earlier with regards to data and what people think they can get from a service like this. Um, so I'd like to know where are we with services and marketing opportunities, and then also the pros and cons of data collection while while you set those uh, perimeters up. Um, so, for instance, with um, the guest control and etc. and data capturing, for instance, um, you have multiple solutions that you can run. You can run a paid solution where they first have to put in credentials, pay for the service that you're trying to render, for instance. Alternatively, like Elmo suggested, the Facebook Wi-Fi. Uh, first have to go into Facebook Wi-Fi, like the page before you get access to this sort of network. Um, but on the date of like data collection, it's not as um, say, um, smart in, in that section. It's giving you the base that you can work off. Um, if you require specialized information collected, you would need to, I, I would suggest, creating your own website, pointing this um, Unify networks to there so that you, they can fill out the form and go and log on to your wireless from there. Um, this will give you all of the basic needs for it, but in that advanced term, you would need to do a little bit more development on your end. So, Dean, as part of that development that you're mentioning now, um, what what are what are the suggestions with regards to authentication? So, we obviously have a couple of um, ways to do so with regards to things like vouchers and those type of things. Um, but where are we with with authentication um, setting up a hotspot, for instance? So, by the authentication itself. You obviously get no authentication that will just allow your clients in a simple password a uh, simple generic password that you could use there just for uh, say your home clients because obviously you're not going to get too many of them and um, you don't constantly want to be giving them a voucher for instance um, on the hotspot section of it though you can do quite a bit you can do uh, payments enabling uh, a radius based connection Facebook connection, for instance, like we've spoke about, even Google Plus, I know not many people use it, but it is also available there. Um, then obviously, like you said, uh, here's on the payment, so you can set it up via PayPal and any accredited uh, to Ubiquity's uh, section that can work from there itself. So there are many ways to, to get the actual authentication running. Um, it just depends on how you want to scale or how you want to build your guest network uh, for your customers or clients, for instance. That's great. Um, thanks, Dean. Can I ask that we have a look at some of the key features on the actual controller uh, back on the presentation? Um, and we can discuss why this free management platform, um, you know, is, is setting up some really good standards uh, when you are looking to deploy a new network, whether it be at home or at um, the office. And I think the word enterprise platforms should also come in play. <laughs> so yeah, comparing with, as I've said, enterprise platforms, um, I think it's essential to choose and understand the benefits of um, using a license-free centralized management platform, which will ultimately enable network administrators 
Um, I'm sure you've heard the words a couple of times with robust all-in-one packages for uh, a quick setup. Now, of course, the main thing about these um, controllers is you want to manage and, and monitor uh, scalable networks. Okay, So from one platform, you can set up multiple profiles, as we've just seen with Dean. And when adding to your network, it is easy as adopting your device um, in the required preset profile. So system and product upgrades are also available from um, the community page um, from Ubiquiti themselves. So you just visit that. Um, and it's as easy as downloading the latest version and installing it on your network. You can even set um, a, a specific time to your network to do so. You can also freely download um, and install the NMS software to a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine that will enable you to remotely manage and monitor your network, even if your network spans over multiple locations, as we've um, learned earlier. We can also make tailor-made solutions that is not just for business, but for home applications as well. I think Dina showed us quite a couple of good examples of um, network profiles that we can set up for a home or business or even commercial. Um, and as I've mentioned, parents, I'm sure you will be first to learn how to set up those profiles uh, with certain security restrictions, um, of course, giving you control and, and peace of mind. Some of these best of breed um, brands such as Ubiquiti is um, the reason why there are so many successful networks in, in home and, and office and commercial and public uh, properties. Um, and whether it's private or, or public cloud hosting, um, yeah, you use one controller and you can control your network from one point. I think it's the convenience of having a connection like that. Um, there are also location-based services where you can gather some insights and, and behavioral patterns. Um, and I think ultimately, if you're a business owner, you'd like to know what your guests are um, interested in. As we've mentioned earlier, there's some good marketing opportunities. I think the whole setup with the controller uh, just leaves you with many, many different uh, application possibilities. Now, as, as part of Miro's uh, pre-sales planning um, benefits to our business partners, uh, is making use of a designer tool. Um, this will also enable you to indicate how many access points to deploy um, and, is, and their transmitting range. Okay, that's also part of, of the controller's functions. It is as simple as adding a, a building plan, which I really want to just ask that when we set up these pre-sales planning that you send us a, a proper business plan. It's sometimes difficult to read off of um, just some measurements. And yeah, we can start adding the access points accordingly. So the benefit of these designer tools is that it will enable and identify things like um, dead zones. It will eradicate slow Wi-Fi speeds and basically taking out the, dare I say, the guessing game. It will also enable you to have certain reports at your disposable, uh, disposal um, for future reference and yeah, Automate Wi-Fi network evaluations. Okay. Per this slide, I think this is it for us at the moment. Um, as I've mentioned earlier a couple of times, we do have upcoming webinars, not just on the Ubiquiti side of things, but Miro is hosting quite a considerable amount of webinars um, that is both product and technology based. The next Ubiquiti webinar is scheduled for next week where we are taking this series a little bit further into the management and convenience of switching and how you can do that through your um, various different Unify switches. Um, there you can see my email address, elmo at miro.co.za. Um, I'm happy to connect with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and also I'll be able to send you a registration link. Um, if you do ever want to see all of the additional dates, you can visit our website, www.miro.co.za, and you'll be able to see all of our upcoming webinars uh, with all of our brands, our product managers, what we are doing, how we're doing it, and um, how you can benefit from that. Um, yeah, also, as I've mentioned on Miro Academy, these webinars are recorded. 
So if you need to refer back to them, you're welcome to join our Miro Academy and just view them there. Also go to YouTube and our social media spaces where you can um, join our YouTube um, channel. And yeah, go like us on all social media spaces. Before we go, um, I just want to quickly send out a quick shout out to IP Video Talk. Now, IP Video Talk is part of Grand Stream, the brand, and it is a manufacturer of voice over IP. Um, they've got various uh, different applications like video communication, IP networking technologies. Um, their extensive product offering also includes SIP and IP phones, FXS and FXO VoIP gateways, analog uh, telephone adapters, video conferencing solution, access control, and just a whole bunch of things um, more. So please visit our website for more on GrantStream. Um, and thank you, IP Video Talk. Are there any questions? Uh, like I've mentioned, it's an open forum. We've, we've got myself and Dina. Um, yeah, are there any questions before we say goodbye? Uh, we seem to, no, oh, we've got a raised hand. Um, Mr. Solly. Uh, Mr. Solly, I've opened your, your, um, your participant, um, profile. You can send us a, a message on the text box or the group chat rather. Okay, there we go. So, Dean, first question in. Jack wants to know, using Wi-Fi 6, how do we tell when the user's devices are connecting to 2.4, 5 gigahertz, or Wi-Fi 6? So, so um, if, if you, you look, look at, at the actual, actual clients device. itself, uh, I can open it here again on the demo itself. Um, if you look here at the clients itself, it actually tells you what they're using, where they're using it, and you can actually check from there if they're using 2.45, if it's a combination of two, if it's OFDM, in that basis. All this um, will be there for your information and to make sure if you're using the correct well, standard in that uh, situation. That's on the controller side. Yes, thanks, uh, Dean. So, Jack, I also just wanted to mention that things, the, the technology that's in the Wi-Fi 6 um, access points is that it will automatically adjust according to um, band steering. So, if your device, like the latest uh, iPhones, for instance, um, that will be operational on Wi-Fi 6, um, yeah, they'll be obviously able to connect to Wi-Fi 6. Alternatively, if your device is not Wi-Fi 6 enabled, it will automatically push you down to the 5 gigahertz. Um, and yeah. Uh, Marotti said, okay, no question. I just wanted to appreciate. Oh, um, sure. Marotti, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, at Miro, we educate ourselves often. As you know, this is uh, an industry that changes often and regularly. Um, so we try and keep on top of things. Uh, we're very proud to be part of Miro and the Udeco group. And um, yeah, if you need any information that you can't find on Miro Academy, the PMs are always available. You can just speak directly to one of your sales uh, engineers and we'll be happy to help. You're also welcome to log a ticket with our technical department uh, if you've got any technical queries um, and then we'll take it from there. So yeah, thank you again, Marotti. Uh, Sally, you can just go to YouTube and, and put Miro distribution in or Miro, it'll come up um, and it will give you all of these videos and many, many more. Uh, there are various different products that we are doing unboxing videos with, etc. Um, so it's just a whole platform of information. Is, are there any additional questions? Um, yeah, with regards to ubiquity and and the access points and the and the platform.
Right. It seems that we um, will continue offline. Um, thank you, everybody, again, for joining us today. Um, please join us again tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow, my apologies, the 25th, as we um, do another webinar based on the switches. And um, we'll, we'll definitely take it from there. You're welcome to mail me, elmo at miro.co.za. Uh, I've just put it in the chat box. And um, yeah, perfect. We will chat soon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good and blessed day.